What's going on everyone? This is Alex USA Days. So today we're continuing with learn quality assurance from scratch and we're getting into SQL introduction. So this topic is a little bit more complex. So I'm going to break this video in parts and shorter parts. But the plan is we're going to learn about SQL in general, what it is, and we're going to practice. So this is going to be hands on during the video. Just follow the links that I have provided in the description. Pause the video type out the commands yourself so you can actually practice and learn SQL this way because really the only way you can learn this stuff is by doing. All right, um, so we are pretty much at section eight right now. So it's been a journey, quite a journey. So we covered a lot of topics already. We introduced the basics. Uh, we went into some uh, commands that you have to know through Git, uh, console commands, how to do documents, how to file bugs, uh, different types of tests and all of that. So right now we're in SQL introduction. This is a basic SQL. This is not advanced SQL, but this is going to be enough to get you going with your testing. You will be able to retrieve data from database using SQL commands, analyze this data, test this data, and maybe even update some values in the database if needed. After that, we're going to proceed. Uh, next section will be into the API testing. All right, so let's uh, get into the SQL. So uh what is sql right what is what it is right pretty much it's a programming language that works with a specific sql based databases right and what is database well anytime you're on a, a web page and you reach for some information let's say you're in instagram and you're opening your friend's profile page and your friend uploaded some new photos so those photos your phone your app reaches the server server talks to the database database sends those files to the server and then server transfers them to your phone so basically the data that is stored is stored in different databases right uh, databases are organized collections of data that can be stored managed and retrieved in various ways there are several types of databases each designed to serve specific purposes and catered to different data management needs you will mostly find SQL and no SQL databases. So SQL databases are the databases that use SQL language that we're going to learn today, practice today. No SQL databases are databases they, that don't use SQL language. SQL stands for structured query language and um, SQL databases are relational databases that are structured using tables with rows and columns. They use an SQL language to manage and query data. Examples of databases that use SQL, and you might have heard some of them, uh, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server. Now, if you think about SQL database and you think, okay, what can I imagine in my head? Like, okay, how does it look like? What What is it, right? Where's the information? How is it stored? You can think about a spreadsheet or a payroll. Uh, or like a schedule, right? Where you have columns uh, that define what sort of data is stored with those uh, within those columns and rows of data for each record. Pretty much like a spreadsheet. Uh, just that spreadsheet has multiple tables, not just one table, multiple tables that store different data. Uh, then there is uh, there are no SQL databases. So databases that do not use SQL and they are designed to handle large volumes of unstructured or semi-structured data and provide greater flexibility and scalability uh, than traditional relational database. For example, Amazon DynamicDB, MongoDB, Cassandra, and many, many more. Um, you can think about NoSQL databases in terms of like Word documents. So SQL database is like a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. NoSQL database is more like a Word document, right? Um, SQL database is uh, structured, it, it is relational. Um, no SQL database, more again, like a storage where you, there's not a lot of relational, rest, less relation. Uh, there are advantages of disadvantages uh, using one versus the other. SQL is still very popular, so, and often companies might have different projects that might need uh, different databases depending on the project. Uh, but SQL is still a preferred choice like for uh, 
startups, small projects, project that needs an organized, uh, manageable database. So we're going to go with SQL. We're going to learn some SQL commands. And uh, by the end of the series of the video into SQL introduction, you'll be able to use uh, and read SQL. It's pretty much like you can read an SQL command. You will be able to read SQL command like you read an English sentence pretty much, right? Um, so a lot of professions use SQL on an advanced level. While you start as a Q engineer, you're not going to be on that level, right? Uh, for example, there are backend engineers or uh, data analysts. They can create a whole set of, uh, you know, databases within those databases have multiple tables with different relationship between those tables. For a QA engineer, starting QA engineer, you, what do you really need to do? You should be able to retrieve data from a database, look at the data and verify that it is correct. Um, for example, there is a price on a web page, right? And the price seems to be a little bit off. So you'll go and check out the database to verify that the price is actually correct. Or maybe some values on the page that are not what you think they should be. So you can go in database and verify, okay, is, is that section is pulling correct values, autos values correct? Okay, so something like that. Um, also, a lot of SQL interview questions for QA engineers uh, unless it is a uh, database test in specific positions. So database test in specific positions might have like an advanced SQL level um, take home tasks where you have to create like multiple different SQL requests, structure them, might be a little bit hard. But most of the QA in engineer uh, interview questions that include SQL questions are really simple. They will sound something like this. So how do you retrieve all customers that are from United States from customers table? Uh, which department has more than 100 employees? Things like that. So you will be able to type out commands like this and do requests like this after the end of the series of video for SQL introduction. Uh, questions like this are really easy to prepare and answer. So we will be uh, practicing during this video and I'm going to uh, use two web pages. So HTTPS uh, www.sql-practice.com. That's going to be the first one. And we're going to use uh, www.w3schools.com SQL section. So the links for those uh, web pages will be in the description. Uh, you don't have to install anything in your machine. You don't have to install a database. Uh, you can just practice online. You can follow along with me, pause the video, type out commands yourself, try to solve the task, or additionally practice more in those pages on your own after introduction. Okay, uh, so how how does a database look like, right? How does it look? So here we have two tables that are coming from a database. We have a customer's table and we have an orders table. So here you can see uh, customers table at the top and at the bottom you can see orders table. This is how it looks like when you retrieve data uh, from the table. In the customers table, you see there are multiple columns. So customer ID, customer name, contact name, address, city, postal code, and so on. So those columns define what sort of data will be stored within them. And then you see records. So each raw is a record of some information. So here's customer number one, all the information about that customer. Uh, here is order, order stable, order ID 10308, and all information about that order. Uh, and you can see there are primary keys. Um, so primary keys are unique identifiers for each record. For example, for a customer's uh, table, primary key would be customer ID. So each record that is added to the table will have to have a primary key. It can't be null, has to be unique value because let's say there are twins. They have same name, first name and last name, uh, same address, everything is the same about them. They're twins, they live at the same apartment, right? And both of them are customers. So how can system distinguish one from another one, right? Well, it's done by using this primary key. So for example, if you go and shop in Costco, 
you have a Costco membership, right? So that Costco membership would be, would be your primary key for your as a Costco customers. So let's say you and your twin, you have different memberships, you have your own cards, you can live at the same address, but the system will know you from your twin, right? So this is what that unique identification is. This is what the primary key uh, is needed for. Another example of a primary key in real life, a value that is unique and belong just to you. So like your taxpayer's ID number, or if you're from the United States, like your social security number, just unique identification uh, that belongs to you. No one else has it. So this is the role of the primary key, right? To identify a record, to give it like unique uniqueness. And then there's something called foreign key. Uh, and foreign key serves a connection because foreign key references primary key in a different table. So here we have uh, two tables, customers and orders. So let's think in, ter think in terms of like Costco member and your check. You just went to Costco, you did some shopping and your uh, check, your receipt has a transaction ID for all the purchases you have, like your, your transaction ID. That would be your order ID. Your transaction ID is the primary key in the orders table right? It may have the details on how many things you purchased, how much it costed, uh, who was the cashier or employee who registered you, and it has your Costco membership number. But there's no other information that your Costco membership number. So that Costco membership number can point back to customers table for your Costco ID that will have all the information about you, like your first name, last name, address, how long you've been member for, and so on. So this is how it looks here. So visually you can see customers has its own uh, primary key, which is customer ID. Orders has its own primary key, which is order ID. But then look, there is a customer ID column that is referencing customer ID column in customers. So you see in orders, there's a customer ID column that is referencing customer ID in customers. So if I'll ask you, if you have access to orders table uh, and to the customers table, if I'll ask you, so who bought order 10355 and order 10383, you can take a look into the foreign key, into the customer ID column. You can see number four for the customer so there are two transactions that the, that customer d did. So foreign key doesn't have to have uh, all values to be unique. Like one person can have multiple purchases, right? So uh, primary key has to have unique values. So you can look at customer ID column, find ID four, and then go back to the customer, find primary key number four, and find all the information about the customer, right? So foreign key serve to connect tables and they can reference primary key in another table primary key is a required column that will be present or uh, sometimes set of columns what that will be present in each table and values within the primary key column all have to be unique for each record uh, because uh, you know you, you can't have a record without identifier. They have to be unique. You can't have repetitive identifiers and they can't be null. So you, you can't have a record without a primary key, right? Okay, uh, so this is how it looks when uh, the table is returned. I uh, remember there are primary keys and there uh, some tables will have foreign keys that allow connecting multiple tables. Now, uh, then there's one more thing that I want you to know that exists in SQL tables and it's called schema. So schema is a logical container or namespace that holds a collection of database objects such as tables, views, indexes, and stored procedures. Uh, you can think of it in terms of database foundation. It's like map of what should go where and how everything is connected. So this is a diagram, an example of a schema. We will work in this uh, table today, in this database, in these tables. So here is uh, a schema, a diagram. So we have one, two, three, four tables. You can see four tables. We can see how they're connected here. Um, some of the schemas will even have like a little golden key 
for a primary key column and like um, a silver key for a foreign key column. So for example, here, uh, here is a patient's column. Within that column, there are, uh, here's patient's table. Within that table, there are columns, patient ID, which is a primary key for patients, first name of a patient, uh, which is Varchar. So that means this column stores text values and this 30 for the Varchar means the text values cannot be longer than 30 characters. So there's a uh, column last name with Varchar 30 also that stores up to 30 characters. Gender, char, that stores only one character. So male or female. Then birth date column, that stores date data type city column that stores again varchar 30 then there's a province id and that's a foreign key and you can see it is connected so one uh to uh one too many connections so it's or many to one it's connected to province names table where province id is a primary key and i will also show you how this looks um when we'll be doing like joint statements but essentially through that province ID, you can go into province names table and get a province name instead of the ID from um, using the joint statement. Then there's allergy columns, height columns, weight columns. Uh, you can see there's different data types. So height and weight are in decimals, right? Then other tables that present in this database. So doctors, also doctor ID, that would be a primary key. First name, Varchar 30, so stores tax values up to 30 characters long. Last name of doctor, again, Varchar 30 stores tax values up to 30 characters long. Specialty, Varchar 25 stores tax values up to 25 characters long. Then there is admissions um, table. You can see it has also patient ID, um, attending doctor ID, admission date, discharge date, diagnosis, all they have different data types. Each column have di different data types. So schema is essentially your foundation for uh, your database. Schema tells how many tables there are, what kind of columns in those tables, what data type was in those uh, columns, how those tables connected, what are the primary keys, what are the foreign keys, and so on. Okay, uh, so let's start uh, practicing with SQL. We will start with some simple commands. Um, so I'm gonna exit this view. So I'll be switching to like a smaller view, slide view like this and actual window that we will be practicing in. Um, to start practicing, you can go to sql-practice.com. Again, this link is in the description. Uh, so you can access it there. Uh, let me zoom this a little bit. 